This is part two of our two-part series on how to use two essential indicators to make better trade decisions in SPY. Part one of our video series, we focused on using ADD to make better trade decisions. In part two, in this particular section, we are gonna focus on how to use TIC, how to use NYSE TIC to make better trade decisions in your SPY trades. We hope to help. We did a video recently on two essential indicators to help you make better SPY decisions. That was the title of the video and uh, we got some follow-up on our YouTube channel from people who watched it saying, hey, go into more depth, go into more detail on how to use ADD and TIC. And so I reached out to one of the younger traders, one of the junior traders on our desk, who is the best person to present on this particular topic. We're just going to have an informal conversation. We're inside of our training room here in New York City. We've got a, a gracious guest with us as well who will be sitting in and learning and hopefully the takeaway for everybody watching is how to use these indicators a little bit better. So Ryan, take it away. If you want to learn three real-world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right-hand corner of your screen. That's gonna open up the free registration page in a new window. Don't worry, you're not gonna lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free, intensive, awesome workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. Now I want to get into the basics of using the tick. The AD line is really good for gauging the overall market strength and weakness, kind of looking at trends and looking at what we have the potential to do on the day based on what underlying stocks are doing. The tick is more of a short-term indicator that lets you gauge sentiment, lets you gauge overbought and oversold points very, points, very similar to how you would use RSI. But the only difference here is it's not a derivative of the SPIs or the NASDAQs or the IWM's price. It's a derivative of all the stocks that are currently trading on the NYSE. So like I said, this indicator can show us buying or selling pressure within the market. And we can use the tick to alert us of these extreme points. In general, and in general, balancing markets find exhaustion points when the tick makes extremes. So if we're kind of hanging around all day, not really doing anything, you know, hovering above and below VWAP, and then all of a sudden get a big tick to the upside, that could potentially be a major exhaustion point on the day. It could be the high of day, it could be a swing high that allows you to trade a counter trend move. When a market's trending, you often can see a lot of extreme ticks. So if we're seeing multiple ticks above 800, or multiple ticks below 800 or negative 800, that can be indicative of a market that's just showing you extreme strength over and over and over again. They're buying basket stocks in bulk. They're continuing to do it. No matter how much higher we move, they're still going, they're still going. That can show you, again, an indication of a trend day. The other, so the most important thing to remember is that there's going to be different situations that help you determine whether or not the market is doing what you're seeing in the underlying internals, you want to make sure you get the overall picture. So for tick, it's not just an extreme tick that gets you to immediately get short. If you have multiple 800 ticks being printed and then another 800 tick comes, you don't want to short that because that could show you that the market is showing extreme strength and you are more than likely going to get rolled over because they're not fading those moves. They want to keep buying at that extreme level. The other way to do it is to look and see where the tick is balancing. If we're having ticks basically all day holding above zero, that's showing you that for the majority of the day so far, ticks of most stocks have been trading on up ticks. 
that can be, again, indicative of overall market strength. And the same thing goes for the downside. So let's say we're in a trending market. We're making higher highs and higher lows. Counter trend moves or pullbacks, as we just call them, are often coming at exhausted points to the opposite level of the ticks. So let's say we're trending up all day and all of a sudden we get a negative tick to negative 600 or lower. That can be the major turning point where we put in a higher low. That can let you get in with a nice area to risk against the previous low, or that can just be the pullback that you scale into in order to catch a bigger trend move. So for me, if my inflection areas, such as market profile, key technical levels, I know people use daily pivots too, if those levels align with a short-term exhaustion point in the tick, and my overall context is supporting the move, that can be a very powerful trade entry for me. If you've been following along to the videos, back when I was doing playbooks, like you definitely would have seen me do an AD line divergence playbook set up off a tick. Those trades that I was showing you before were trades I've taken in the past. Those are my A plus setups. Those are bread and butter. When you see those, you can catch a very huge move in the spies. So if you were to summarize variables for your A plus setups, what would it look like? So first off, I build my inflection areas. My inflection areas are often, you know, based off the market profile, composite structures of the previous day. Um, those often come from major highs or major lows that have happened on the daily chart, overnight highs, overnight lows, overnight balance areas, previous day balance areas. So if Basically, it just comes from technical analysis and taking that technical analysis and applying it to major areas where volume was done by price, not as much volume by time. So obviously, that's a whole other video if we wanted to do that another time. But I build out my inflection areas. And then from then, I'm looking to see if we are in that inflection area and I'm getting signals that we talked about in the AD line or the tick, that is showing me that there's a major statistical probability that we get a reaction to either direction from this key inflection area. So the inflection area is mostly for me to have an area to control risk against and the indicators that I'm using are my entries or exits into or out of those zones. Okay, so let's dive into an example of that. So there's two examples on this chart. The first one I'll do is right off of the open. So off the open, we're in an opening range. This is a balancing market. And then we get a tick exhaustion to the upside on the high of day. So this tick value we're printing is about positive 800, which is indicative of exhaustion to the upside, especially at this time. We were like in the 290s. The VIX was just starting to get elevated. This was earlier in August. A positive 800 tick in the first you know, half hour, hour of the day can definitely set up a major key inflection area. We get that big pop into the 800s, and that's the swing point that sets up a massive short trade. Immediately after we get that short, you can see the ticks shift from being positive to almost all, all below zero. So that shift right there is further confirmation as we're starting to trade lower that there's real overall broad market weakness. The second one that we're going to look at is a counter trend move. We develop this downtrend during the day. We break out of the downtrend and we get this big move up to the upside and we print this big thousand tick. So we like to call out thousand ticks on the desk. The statistical probability of a thousand tick being a short term inflection area or a turning point against a trend is very good. I'd say it's decently high odds. In this scenario, we get the major high being put in, and this is off a high tick. Then we trade lower. We're kind of sitting, waiting, waiting, waiting. And then we get another pop up. And on that pop up, we get a four or 500 tick. Two things are going on here. A four or 500 tick is indicative of short covering. Basically anything above a 400 to 600 can be short covering and not real buying. Because again, institutions need to buy baskets of stocks. When they're really buying them, you're going to get these big 800 ticks, 1,000 ticks. The other thing that we're seeing is, look, the, spot, the spies make a higher high off of this pivot, but the ticks are making a lower high. So that right there is a divergence, short covering, divergence, key inflection area, 
you have three things in your favor, the overall trend on the day is bearish, that's a decent setup in order for you to get involved for a potential rollover point into the afternoon and into the two o'clock hour. In this case, it doesn't work out, but if you were looking to catch a further trend move on the day, this would be a high odds probability trade. Here's another good example, and this is a good example of a divergence, and when you have ticks balancing positive, we open up on this day, we develop an opening range, we break below the opening range, pop back into it, fail, make new lows, fail from BWAP again, and now we're trading at the lows of the day. So what I would be looking for if I'm thinking, okay, as we're making these lows, we haven't printed any ticks below zero, which means that the spies are trading lower over a point, and we haven't even gotten the majority of stocks on down ticks once today. That right there is showing me that they're not really selling basket stocks. The indice is just trading lower, and it doesn't matter why it's trading lower. It just matters that it is, and the overall market is not showing that weakness. That's a divergence. So now I'm thinking about how do I get involved in this move? Intuitively speaking, you're looking for the potential for a higher low. If you get a higher low, you can eventually get a trend breaking move. You can get involved at the higher low on the first negative ticks of the day. You can get involved on the break of the trend line right here, or you can get involved on the first pullback from VWAP back into barely negative ticks, like negative 200, on a day where we're showing much more positive ticks than negative ticks. So in a balancing area like that, it starts to become indicative that we could trade at higher prices. And you can see we go and make a, a, a higher high into these big 600, 800 ticks later on the day. So I just have a bunch of keys to remember that we kind of touched on. These are basically signals that can get you to gauge the overall health of the market in short-term overbought, oversold periods and divergences. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that the market context, aka the short-term, intermediate term, long-term, make sure those bias and the technicals are aligned with the movements that you're seeing. If you have a major support level that you're watching and we trade into that support level and there's an AD line divergence where they're not making new lows in the AD, that can be a powerful trade. If we get a negative 600 tick into that trade, that's the third you know, signal that you're seeing that is just giving you more statistical edge to get involved from good prices for a bigger trade. And yeah, I mean, having an understanding of the market breadth, in my opinion, um, allows you to have a bigger picture approach to the movements in the major stock indices, and that just gives you more edge in what can be one of the hardest things to trade. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video. From all of us at SMB, train and trade well.